Hello my friends, Skylum has done it again. They came out with a new software update for Luminar Neo. If we go to check for updates, you will see now we are at version 1.4.0. By the way, if you are new to this channel, welcome. I do want to let you know that I do have a playlist with Luminar Neo tutorials. It has over a hundred tutorials. So go ahead and find that and get up to speed with how to edit in Luminar Neo. What is new in this version? If you go into tools all the way to the bottom, you will see now we have clone stamp tool. So we will do a quick edit into this image. We'll uh, remove this branch here on the, in the top. We will remove this sign that is over here into the window. We will also remove this branch here on the corner, on the bottom right corner. This one will be the easiest one to remove. Then this is kind of like a medium and this is the hardest, more tricky one. It requires a few tricks and I will show you what to look out for when you work with something like this. Before we do anything though, we do have to just, you know, do some quick edits in here. So first I will go to crop and I want to straighten up my image a little bit. It's just a little bit crooked, maybe something like that. I will accept the changes. And then I will do a few edits. This, by the way, it's a JPEG image that I shot a few weeks ago with my iPhone. So it's not the sharpest, it's not the best quality. It was a very foggy morning. This is a mill that is in my town, right by my kids' school. So I walk by there all the time and uh, it was a foggy morning, so I took an image of it. It's not the best image, but it's a good example to see how to remove some things. So I just worked a little bit with the exposure, the blacks, the whites. I am going to go into color and just add some vibrance. We'll also add a little bit of saturation and that is looking better. Maybe even add a little bit more exposure. This is good so far. Then into the enhance, I do add some accent and that is looking better. Then into the structure, just add a little bit of structure and I'll just mask it with the brush loosely um, over the mill over here. And there we go. And the reflection. This is not a editing tutorial, it's just to show you how to use the clone tool, but we do have to fix the image a little bit so it doesn't look too terrible. Great. Structure is done. I'll go into color, into the HSL, into saturation, and I will increase the reds. I want to bring out the reds into this uh, mill, so that looks better to me. Great. I think that's all I'm going to do for adjustments. Let's move into the clone and stamp tool. I apologize for the background noise, but I do have construction happening. They will not stop anytime soon. So we just have to work through it. Open the clone and stamp tool. Here you see you have size of the tool. You have the softness and you have the strength. For the sky, I will use it as softness at 100%. And the way it works, you hold down option to take a sample where you want to clone from. And then you start painting. And I don't know why this is happening, but it seems like my brightness went down and my image is blue again. I will fix that in a second. Right now, let's just get rid of this. So by the way, holding down option, taking a sample from here, let go of the option. And now I am painting onto the sky using this sample from here. There we go. And that is pretty much gone. We just have a little corner here. So that one was removed. Let's go back into the develop and brighten it up. I don't know what happened, why it got dark like that, but there we go. Great. Now let's go back into the clone tool and remove these signs over here. So I'm gonna zoom in first quite a lot. And I'm going to start with this sign over here. So go into the clone stem tool I'm gonna sample maybe from over here. You wanna sample from somewhere with a similar tones. So you don't want something that is too dark or too bright. And you see after I sample, I have a preview what it's going to look like. So I am working, keep sampling. And for this, maybe I didn't need it to be at 100% softness, but let's see if we can get a decent result. 
You see, I went over over here. This is the thing that annoys me about Luminar Neo. I cannot do an undo. I know they said they have undo button if you do command Z. So if I do command Z, it does not undo. My computer is just, you know, complaining about it. I try option Z, I tried shift Z, nothing works. So I cannot undo that. For me, if I want to undo, I will just have to reset the tool completely and then start again. And that is for any tool, not just the clone stamp tool. I use a Mac and that just, you know, it never worked for me. I cannot undo things. So there you go. We fixed that window. If we go command zero to fit to screen. Now you see that sign is gone from over there, but we do have to remove it from the reflection as well. Otherwise, that will be a big giveaway that we did some shenanigans in here. So because the reflection reflects what this window is, I'm just going to sample from the window over here and I am just going to paint along with that. Now the problem is, you see, I already made a mistake. The problem is when you have a reflection, the reflection is pretty much always a little bit darker than your original part that is on top. So you see how it doesn't really blend? So I will just sample from over here next to it and that will blend it a little bit better. So there we go. Oh, you see, I, I took some of the white from over here, but now I cannot undo it. So I'll just have to keep cloning it from next to it. If you use a Mac and your undo button works, please let me know. in the comments below. All right, keep sampling and doing this. We'll say that is good. Command zero to fit to screen. That doesn't look too bad. Let's see, this is the before, this is the after, before and after. Let's move into this bottom portion. First of all, I want to remove this one over here. So I will sample from the water and just paint away. And that is an easy one. Now let's move into this branch. There's a lot going on in here because it's overlapping. And let's see. I need the move tool. There we go. I will start from the water side and then I'll move inwards. So I will work from the edge over here. So let's see. We'll work with these branches. I will try to work quickly to make the tool bigger and smaller just like any brush the right and left bracket keys work for that so we'll work from this edge keep sampling you want to sample the same kind of tones that are nearby you don't want to sample from all the way in the other side because the light might be different it's just not gonna look right so there we go that looks good now we make the brush smaller and we'll do on this side it's pouring rain outside that's what you're hearing together with my construction people now I'm sampling from here from this uh, green and painting away now here is a thing to look out for you see I'm sampling from this green and I'm painting here and you see how my edge is smooth? Well, the reflection, because there's a little ripples in the water, you see how it has this zigzag patterns? So it's not smooth like this. So if I just do it like this, even if I paint with the water, it just doesn't look natural. We need to have this ripple effect. So make sure you clone some of these ripples and put it on the edges. And that will make it just look more natural. So there you go. And that one looks natural because we do have those ripples. So keep sampling. I'm gonna make my brush even smaller now. And let's see, I will work from here. Make sure you do not have repeating patterns. That's another telltale that you have done clone and stamp tool. It is really pouring rain. My computer is right next to the window, so you can really hear it. I don't know why it's happening. Hold on. I'm going to work from the bottom here. I 
as you can see sometimes I make mistakes but I do not I cannot undo so I just have to keep cloning from other parts until it looks right Can you hear the rain? You see now we have these repeating patterns here, so we just have to break them apart by taking samples from different places. And here I'm gonna remove some more of this and then make sure you take some ripple parts from over here. And now it looks like repeating here, so that's not so great. So let's see. I'm gonna take some of these ripples. That didn't work out, let's see again. It's just a game of going back and forward until you get the things to look the way you want to. There we go, that looks better. Let's move on until here. We have these repeating three lines here, so I'm gonna take a sample maybe from here, kind of break the pattern. I'm sorry if I'm working too fast for you. I'm just trying to make this video not be, you know, 40 minutes long. Sample next to it. Keep dragging around, sample again. Made a mistake, I have to go over it because I cannot undo. All right, let's keep moving on. So let's chat a little bit while we edit this. Um, now that you probably had Luminar Neo for quite a while. What are the things that you wish they will add to it? I know I have a long list. What is your list? What are the things you're wishing for? The things I wish for is I wish they will add um, better selection tools, maybe something like color range or maybe luminance uh, range. I think those will be so much better than all these AI, you know, selection tools. I don't mind AI selection tools, but most of the time they never really do a good job and you still have to do it manually. And I would rather have the tools that I can use so I can do a manual selection than just rely on this auto selections. All right. Um, let's see. Now we're moving here onto the mid section of the image. I have this stick going straight to the middle of the rock, so I'm going to zoom in even more. For this one, I will reduce the softness to maybe around 35. I don't wanna have too soft of a brush and just kind of, all right, maybe I need more softness. I'll go softness 56 and that will blend it a little bit better. There you go. Now moving into here. Increase the softness. Make my brush bigger. Once you do it, if you've used the clone stamp tool and other, you know, softwares, then you get pretty quick at it. 
just always look for patterns, always looks for things that, you know, that will be able to tell that you cloned something out. Make sure you do not have repeating patterns. Samples from nearby to get the same tones, but make sure you don't have those, you know, you know what I mean. All right, almost done. You see here I have like one, two, three brighter dots. I need to break that pattern, so I'm gonna paint some of that in there, some of that in there. Same here, I have two, three of those things. All right, almost done. I'm gonna make my brush bigger, maybe zoom out a little bit. I think I'm too zoomed in. I thought I was done, but I was not, so let's keep going here. With a bigger brush, this would be easier to fill in. All right, there we go. I do want to keep this horizon line in here, so I'll just go like this. And now, of course, we have some repeating things. Make sure I minimize them. There we go. And I think we pretty much removed it. Let's see, command zero to fit to screen and that branch is gone. So let's see, this is the before, this is the after, before and after. We cleaned up the image quite a bit and now we do not have those distracting elements. I hope this was helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyler Ewing. I'll see you in my next video.